Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, let's kick ass and remove the fossil. Uh, a serious point made in a, in, a, in a pointed way, using acronyms. When I was looking at this, uh, this conference, I decided to look at the, uh, the headings of the sessions. And I was thinking about, okay, what, what direction do I want to go? And, and I thought to myself, the objective of this Smart for C uh, conference is to create CIFs. And I'll leave you to ponder what a CIF is. But the, the first session after this is about smart shipping. And we can, we can discuss why that is. We can talk about big data. We're going to talk about energy efficiency, an area where I think we are making great strides in this industry. Um, and of course, cybersecurity, that other buzzword that, we, that trips off our lips in, in, in such an uh, easy way. But I think we're missing one essential element in our discussion. That human that uh, Abastolos was talking to earlier. We're missing that human discussion and the, the role of the human in all of this. But back to CIFs. Safe, efficient, environmentally ships, environmentally friendly ships. Or safe, efficient, environmentally friendly solutions. Isn't that essentially what we're trying to, to uh, achieve here? Um, I would debate with you whether our ships are safe today. I would debate whether they are efficient. And I would debate with you whether they're environmentally friendly. There, there are certainly people trying to do it in, in certain areas, but overall our industry is, does not present as a safe, efficient, environmentally friendly industry. And we have, we have some way to go. All of our discussions seem to be about technology, and we're not facing the, the background, we're not facing the infrastructure, we're not facing the human involved in all of this. So, so let's talk about that industry and that environment. And I think there are three areas. There's this cave, there's this ass, and there's this fossil. And for me, those things talk about and portray in a, in a somewhat pointed way what our industry is about. The cave is all about attitude. And, and everybody here knows someone who lives in that cave. Everybody here knows somebody who lives there. And the ass, that's all about our structure. That's all about how we do business in this industry today. And the fossil, that goes to the nub of the thing I think we really miss in our industry. And I'll talk about it a little bit more. But that fossil is about fleet operations. We hear about logistics. We hear about blockchain and logistics. We hear about Maersk fixing, fixing their cyber problem in the logistics and everybody investing in blockchain. But what are we doing about our fleet operations? So CAVE, citizens against virtually everything. CAVE. If you don't know somebody who lives in that CAVE, I, I defy it. I've been on many a sales call throughout this maritime industry. And the very first words out of the purchasing manager's off word, mouth is, yes, but. I've got something, yes, but. He's a citizen against virtually everything we try and promote in this industry. And our industry is full of cavemen. We here are, the, are trying to promote this, this technology, but we're confronted by these cavemen. And they all live in this archaic spaghetti structure, the ass that I've been talking about. It's an impossible environment that we currently have to create game-changing behavior. <coughs> Our industry bodies are committee-based consensus that, that, in my opinion, hinder quality, hinder standardization, and actually hinder innovation. Have you ever thought about how a regulation gets passed at the IMO? Have you ever thought about the process that it goes through? Five or ten bodies outside the IMO are called in to give their opinion. I happen to be a director of one of them, along with directors of all the other Ectus manufacturers. And we go into this room and we discuss how an Ectus should be designed, how it should be look, how it should operate. And because nobody needs to be upset, we have to come up with this camel that should be a racehorse. 
we have to come up with an idea that needs to be consensus-based. And then we give it to the IMO. And then 180 people in there, most who've never seen a ship, have to have a debate about how it looks. And eventually, we pass a regulation. And here we are, 27 years later, with an ectus that has no standardization, that is overcomplicated, and half the ship's mariners have not been trained how to use properly. And those that do, use about 10% of it. That is an archaic spaghetti culture and structure. And you cannot move forward with innovation, and you cannot move forward in the new generation in that kind of enterprise, and that kind of behavior. We really need to change both the attitude inside our industry from a ship owner's perspective, but also from our industrial lawmaking and regulatory approach. And it's going to happen whether we like it or not. Let me, let me, I, I don't mean to, to denigrate all of the, the, the comp everybody that, that operates because we all do it with good intent. But think about class, think about the P&I clubs, <laughs> think about the IMO, everybody that, that works for the good of the industry. But at the end of the day, they are self-serving policemen because they are owned or operated or controlled by the ship owner. Class is there to, to set safety standards for ships. Yet, many a ship owner has been known to strong arm class to let the ship sail. P&I exists for the good of the ship owner. Yet, P&I Club needs to maintain enough, enough ship owners in the club in order to operate. It's an interesting dynamic, the way we, we operate in our industry. And then on to fossil. This is my particular passion. Fleet operations services are stuck in limbo. As I said earlier, we talk about blockchain and we talk about logistics, an area in shipping, not in maritime, in shipping, that is far advanced. Ashore, logistics is moving at a fast rate. Just look at Amazon. All I have to do to get my coffee at home is to say, Alexa, bring me a coffee from Starbucks. I don't need to think about 2060, because logistics is way ahead and it won't cost me a thousand dollars. But in our industry, our fleet operations continues to operate like a fossil. And I don't blame the ship operator entirely. I blame the industry attitude. Think about how many ships have Ectus on board, and yet the crew are still made to use a paper chart. I can name you 500 ships where they've only ordered one Ectus, and they continue to use paper charts. Think about the fact that we should be doing electronic logs, that information should be flowing backwards and forwards between ship and shore completely without human touch. Yet, we load more and more technology on board the ship, we load more and more complexity on board the ship, and yet, and then we expect the seafarer to know how to use it, to stay trained on how to use it, and to continue to do all the paper, paper processes. I know of a very well-known cruise company where, because of the class requirements, they carry a man to write the paper log every day, even though there's a fully automatic electronic log. This creates fatigue, which creates incidents, which creates problems. We need to standardize, we need to simplify, and we need to remove the paper. So before we start talking about more technology, we need to think about the infrastructure that we have, and we need to think about that human interface. Then ashore, what an amazing place ashore is. Fragmented decision making, and particularly purchasing in operations. I have to smile when I hear that a ship owner who's had been hacked is going to invest in cyber security. You go into that office, and then they tell you, yeah, well, our decision making has been slowed down because we, we're investing in cyber security. But don't, don't worry, um, we're, we're going to put it in order for satellite communications and we're going to put it in order for Ectus 
um, you can go online in an auction and we'll choose the lowest cost. And they'll buy their satcoms from there and they'll buy their rectus from there and they'll buy their charts from there that's going to run on that rectus. And then they'll go and buy another application to run on the satellite communications. And this is a company that wants to be cyber secure. It may be cyber secure in one way or another, but opening up with fragmented solutions is not, and having a price driven culture is not the way to be cyber secure. This is about attitude. We're missing the point of enterprise technology. So, there's another element we need to remember as we move forwards, whether it's by 2016, and that is that the next generation is really not interested in the bureaucratic way that we behave. They're not interested. They don't care. They have no interest in the current maritime business. They want to play strategy games on a computer. They want to be looking at those ships moving around, and they want to look at that ship being navigated in the same way as they play Star Wars. They're interested in virtual reality. They're interested in analytics. They're interested in this whole new way of doing business. And so if we want people to join the industry, and if we want people to join the new maritime industry and the new shipping industry, we need to think about the things that are going to attract them. They need to be the kids that are happier in Silicon Valley than they are walking down the streets of London. Very quick word on, the, on another direction on the human factor philosophy. Admiral Rickover, who was the father of the US nuclear submarine uh, Navy, focused intently on human factor. He rigorously trained to avoid mistakes. And the US Department of Ten Defense has used the same approach for cyber threats. And as I'll just quote Admiral Mike Rogers, where he said, it's about ethos, it's about culture, it's about how you train man and equip your organization, how you structure it, and the oper concept, operational concepts that you apply. If we're going to be cyber secure, and if we're going to move to the new world, then we need to create high reliability organizations. One where we have a strict culture of excellence, and we correct deviations before disaster. Industries like aviation, air traffic control, nuclear power plants, and space flight, where they know one disaster creates a catastrophic situation. And those of you who manage bulk carriers say, well, that's not us, we don't mind if we have a catastrophe once in a while. Well, you know, the oil industry woke up to this. That's why the uh, Amoco Kudus and the Exxon Valdez and the uh, Deepwater Horizon, Deepwater Horizon, failure of process, failure of all these sort of things. We, ne we maybe don't need to be at the same level as the space flight, but we definitely need to think that in order to be cyber secure, we need to work towards a high reliability organization. And that means introducing six connected principles being ready to, allowing the crew and everyone else to own up to mistakes. Providing enough depth of training. Requiring procedural compliance. Making sure that we have forceful backup and controls. Not allowing all these sticks and thumb drives on board. And a questioning attitude. Allowing the crew and the rest of the organization within fleet operations to check and double check, and a formality in communication. It's not enough to put technology on top of paper. It's not enough to go and buy the latest and greatest so-called cyber secure solution. Just as it's not enough to go and buy technology for any sort of fleet operation, we have to change our culture. We have to change our approach. And so, if we're going to have a safe, efficient, energy-friendly ship, we need to overcome this archaic spaghetti structure. We need to eliminate the limbo that exists in fleet operations. And we need to create a culture of high reliability. <coughs> and most importantly, we need to address that human factor attitude. Thank you.